Hi everyone. Now, it's not widely known, but in my younger days, I used to be an electronics engineer and circuit designer. In fact, I used to write articles for a lot of the popular hobby magazines, including uh, Everyday Electronics, uh, Wireless World. Um, what was the other one? The one of my, I used to right mainly for was the uh, Electronics Today International and Electoral magazines. But one of the uh, most common things that people used to bring to me was an old radio and this is a tatty old radio. It's not tatty, it works okay as a radio it works but what happens is over time you tend to find that the mode selector switch the tape to radio gets a bit crackly the volume control goes a bit graunchy and that's crackly and I've used this radio for about the past five years and the volume control is either on or off but most of these problems are actually easy to solve because this is a bit uh, on the dusty side <laughs> It's got some brick dust and various other stuff on it because it's been around a bit this thing has but let's just give it a quick brush off. I know it looks a bit manky but hey whatever. That's good enough. The cure for most of these crackly problems is pretty simple normally. What I'm going to do is uh, open this up. Let's just uh, find a small screwdriver and take these screws out. I'll probably edit this piece of the video out because I'm going to take out all the screws to take the back off. So bear with me. Okay, I think I've loosened all the screws off. These usually come apart. Years ago, manufacturers always put a little piece of sticky tape here over one screw just to say it's been inspected and if you broke that then it shows that uh, you'd opened it up <laughs> and you couldn't take it back to the store to say it doesn't work because it's been tampered with but does it really matter these days i don't think so anyway let's try and open this one up and see what uh, we're faced with all right Let's take the back off. Okay, so... Alright, the screw's falling out. That's not a problem. Just stick those to one side a minute. On a lot of these... Um, oh, come on, let go. I've got a screw there that uh, is decided to hang on. You will let go. <laughs> Thank you. And you can come out as well. There we go. Uh, what you tend to find on a lot of these is the tuning dial. And this one's not much different, really. Uh, years ago, on a lot of music centres, they had a very wide tuning dial which allowed you to uh, tune very accurately. And what they used to use was a, a gear mechanism and an air-spaced variable capacitor for the radio tuning. Most radios these days use a, uh, a closed tuning capacitor, like this one here. Um, it usually means that the tuning dial knob, this one here, is normally directly connected to the tuning capacitor and this little uh, although it won't move now simply because I've taken it apart but this marker here is directly connected to the tuning knob anyway that's just a, a bit of history as you can see here there's the tuning knob directly connected to the tuning capacitor here Oops, my air blows fallen on the floor. Uh, and that's on the opposite side of the circuit board. But let's just pick this up a minute. 
this is a, an air blaster by the way that uh, I can if I want to uh, generate some air give it a good blast out There's plenty of dust in there, but it doesn't really matter. Let's uh, persevere. What I'm going to do is probably lubricate this uh, tuning tape here. Because you can see this tape simply moves up and down the dial where the knob connects to it. Which makes it a little bit graunchy. But what happens here is, what we've got is... Uh, a mode selector switch which is a bit graunchy and the volume control itself is a little bit on the graunchy side as well now the mode selector switch here is another switch that's inside the radio there uh, it's not easy to see but the volume control controls a slider behind there and the mode selector switch is behind there too. Now what you can do is just squirt some WD-40 into the back of this slider. I could take all of this mechanism out but I can't be asked to be honest. Um, you can use normal WD-40 or the smart saw. Well, what I've got here is some contact cleaner. And I'm simply going to spray it into the front of the mechanism. And hopefully some of the, uh, the vapour will get into that um, contact. So let's have a squirt. I'm literally just going to douse it with this contact cleaner. Fortunately this is it, it's got no residue and uh, it's a good contact, contact cleaner so just squirt it in. Just give everything a really good spray. You can also spray this onto these sliders and the switch on the outside and the inside won't cause any damage at all and that feels better already and that switch is more positive so I'm going to leave that as it is this tape mechanism here I'm not sure if I can demonstrate this but let's see if I can just swap this around this uh, get out of the way, antenna. This tape mechanism here is a little bit dodgy. It's a bit tight, and as I say, this just moves this indicator up and down the dial. So what I'm going to do with that is literally just use a little bit of LM grease on it. I'd normally use a PTFE grease, but I don't have any. So just a little bit of LM grease, grease the mechanism. I could take the tape out, but that's going to be a nuisance. So lift it out, smear a bit of grease on there. Won't really matter once it goes back together. Just wipe that off my uh, finger. And I'm simply going to screw it back together. I just need to realign this peg with that hole just to make sure that the tuning mechanism is in the right place. So, where's the peg? Where's the hole? Just turn the dial till it lines up with it. Just see if it moves the dial. There we go. 
that's much smoother. So that's working okay. And I'll screw it back together. We can ignore this overspray here. This will evaporate perfectly okay. So I'll put the screws back in and I'll come back in a moment. And the last one. This camera cut probably can't see it because uh, the antenna's in the way. But there goes the last screw. I'm just going to move my little toolkit out of the way. So, hopefully, these will now work perfectly again. Let's uh, power it up and see what happens. Stick the power in. Turn it from tape to FM. Turn it off. Helps if I put the power on. <laughs> so, what do we have here? There we go. There's radio too. And there's a nice smooth volume control. That's AM. Don't really know if there's anything on AM these days, but we can have a go. There's something there, but who listens to AM? All the way up. It's uh, really good. And the volume control is nice and smooth. So, hopefully that's been a, a little bit of help to you. Almost all old radio cassette recorder volume controls and uh, selector switches can be cleaned in this way. Uh, what happens is over the years they tend to um, oxidize and don't make very good contact but just a bit of switch cleaner is all it takes to uh, to fix them. I hope you found that helpful. Thanks for watching.